Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Baron and we are about to enter the third level of the mortuary. Done. Done. All those cabinets seem to be empty. Alright. Oh no, there's a charcoal charm. Alright. <coughs> so there's an en entrance here and an entrance here. I'm gone. Looks like it's getting hot in here. Who are you? This skeleton, number 748, according to the number chiseled above its brow, is odd only in that some of its teeth appear to be false ones made of reddish brown stone. They are clearly not valuable, however, as its caretakers would have otherwise removed them. <coughs> Let's examine the skeleton carefully. Someone has taken care to bind the bones of this skeleton with leather straps woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. The straps are secured to metal bolts punched into the skeleton's joints. This skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul smelling glues. Try and pry out the skeleton's joint bolts. War chief, that's vandalism. Those bolts are probably the only thing holding that bag of bones together. Necromancy only goes so far with these old fellows, you know. Oh. I didn't want to cause any permanent damage. Oh, it's not a problem, Morty does a strange bobbing motion that you think might be a shark. Just wasn't sure if you knew that or not. By all means, go ahead. Okay, let's try it. You pull at the iron bolts, but you're not strong enough to pull them out. They've been hammered in pretty tight. Hmm, maybe if I had the right tool I could get them out. Hmm, I may be backbones. Hmm, wonder if this gravebird would mind if I borrowed his body. Hmm, I don't think he's in any position to object. <coughs> Morty studies the skeleton for a moment and shakes his head. Nah, I'd need a fresher one than this. And something with a little more dignity. This one's all creaky and fractured. Alright then, let's go. Who is that? A dustman. The dustman regards you with stony gaze. Are you lost? No, I'm not lost. I had some questions. If you are not lost, what is your business here? Hmm. I'm here to see someone. Who are you here to see? I'm here to see Doll. Doll is most likely in the receiving room on the second floor. He's quite busy and not in the best of health. Unless you have pressing business, I would not disturb him. Very well, thanks for the information. The dustman nods and then returns to his duties. Okay, so well, it's not that difficult to fool them. The skeleton turns to face you. 42 has been chiseled into its forehead and a number of its bones, mostly the jaws and joints have been bound with leather straps. A black smoke is draped over its body. Mm, I think this is the corpse I had that memory about. <coughs> At the sound of your voice, the skeleton suddenly straightens up. It crosses its arms over its chest and its fingers hook into its ribcage. Cross your arms over your chest. In response, the skeleton actually drops its arms to its sides. The leather cord securing the skeleton's torso snap and the ribcage falls outward like a pair of, a du of double doors. Reach into the ribcage, feel around. To your surprise, your hand vanishes as you reach inside the ribcage. You have a strange feeling it is somewhere else. As you reach inside the ribcage, your head bumps against an invisible object. It's about the size of a fist and seems to be attached to the skeleton's spine. Take the item out. As you pull the item out, the skeleton suddenly disintegrates and the iron bolt securing its joint clatter to the floor. Whatever this item was, it seems to have been the only thing holding it together. Let's take a look at it then. It looks like an unremarkable lump of iron. You can't imagine why someone would hide it inside the ribcage of a skeleton. Let's take a closer look at the piece of iron. We get 250 experience points. As you place your hands on the lump of iron to examine it, there's a hiss and the metal evaporates, leaving behind a strange dagger, a handful of coins wrapped in a dirty cloth, and two bloody teardrops. These look like they were inside the lump of iron. We take the items and leave. Done. What else I'm gone. Drop, my friend. A wooden club. 
So we have Clot Charms. Heals 9 hit points, gives us a plus 5% a resistance to slashing attacks, 10% resistance to piercing attacks. This glistening blood drop is as hard and smooth as a pearl. When placed on the tongue, it dissolves instantly and spreads through the character's bloodstream. The charm simulates the user's blood into clotting and scapping over existing wounds, healing any minor damage the user may have suffered before consuming the charm. Furthermore, as long as the charm is in effect, the player's blood becomes more aware of new wounds that occur, especially any attacks that draw blood. The charmed individual becomes more resistant to slashi slashing and piercing attacks as their blood clots and scabs over the wounds as soon as the flesh is torn. Not too shabby. Let's put it in here. Let's put that in here. The club is a 1d6 crushing weapon. <coughs> it's as good as the corpse's limb, apparently. We have a green steel knife. 1 to 4 piercing damage. This razor sharp uh, knife has been forged out of the famed Batorian green steel, found only in the wastelands of Avernus. This peculiar green ore can be tempered into metal much lighter than normal steel. In addition, green steel weapons tend to retain their remarkably fine edges and are capable of dealing out more damage than their standard counterparts. So I guess it's better than the scalpel. Let's switch it. What does that do? The charcoal charm. 50% resistance to fire, 25% resistance to magical fire. This piece of charcoal is a charred bone fragment of some creature, perhaps a finger bone or a talon. Various symbols have been scratched onto its surface. Uh, the scratching are so faint you almost miss them. This charcoal charm temporarily protects the user against flames and extreme heat. To use the charm, the charred bone is snapped and both halves are ground to powder. Then the charcoal dust is rubbed over the heart of the user. We have lots of nice items. What is that here? Rags. This thick mass of rags looks look as if they were torn from, ta ta from a tapestry or someone's robes. Okay, we have lots of stuff. But we, um, I will keep the scalpel, but uh, not much else. Alright. Alright, you say. Done. Oh, they hold. No. Um. I had some questions. I was here for an internment, but there seems to have been a mistake. Who was being interred? Perhaps the service are taking place somewhere else in the mortuary. Hmm. That could be. Where are the other other services taking place? Uh, several internment chambers line the pyramid of the mortuary. They follow the curve on of the wall on the first and second floor. Do you know the name of the deceased? No. Then you should check with one of the guides at the front gate. They can assist you. Thank you. Well, they're easily fooled. Despite this corpse's dry, leathery skin, it's clear this was once a beautiful woman of middle years. Whomever prepared the corpse seems to take pity on her, sewing her bow lips shut with small, neat stitches and tattooing the number 832 upon her format and elegant script. So, doing anything later? The corpse continues to stare at you. Um, do we get anything right. nice here? Yeah. Needle and thread. I'm gone. Junk. Do we need junk? I have no idea. Done. What's up with you here, zombie worker? This reanimated corpse has had its lips sewn together and the number 310 carved into its brown. The smell of formaldehyde permeates the area around it. It turns its lifeless eyes upon you as you move to Bart's path. <coughs> so, seen in anything interesting going on? The corpse continues to stare at you. Fine, then don't talk to me. Alright. Down to second level. Crematorium. Okay, we have to I'm check gone. that out. What I'm do gone. we get here? I'm gone. This is empty. Done. We have a pry ball. A dustman request. Uh, crushing damage one to one to six. Um, everything seems to be uh, cr seems to do crushing damage one to six. Speed four. Speed four. Mm. This iron primer can be used to pry open doors, chests, and even the occasional 
reluctant ribcage. It also makes a good bludgeoning weapon when there's no time for subtlety. Okay, so let's use this then instead of the arm. So we have something that uses fists, we have something that is a club, and we have something that is an edged weapon. This container is locked. Well, unlocked. Forced it. What do we have? Cloth charms and uh, money. Well, there are three skeletons here, no zombie workers. Doesn't matter. The corpse's meaty head was clearly severed at some point and hastily soon back on. Several different sets of stitching, all in various states of unraveling, seem to indicate that the head is constantly being knocked back off and reattached during the course of its work. A number, 79, has been cut into its temple, circumscribed by a fanged circle that appears to have been branded on its forehead. Hmm, let's examine the fanged circle. The fanged circle looks like it was branded on the corpse's forehead long ago, presumably before it died. It might have been a religious icon of some sort, or a rite of passage. You notice that one of the recesses between the inner fangs has a small triangle with it, as if it had some special significance. Hmm, I wonder if the space between the fangs matched the grooves of this copper earring Updated I my journal. The corpse makes no reply. It looks like it is too far gone to answer any of your questions. So... I found a strange fanged circular symbol on the fort of Zombie 79. Just looking at the symbol reminded me of the ancient copper earring I got from the southeast preparation room. Perhaps the two are connected. Let's take a look. We use it. This copper earring looks extremely old. It looks like it was meant to be worn, but there doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. There's a series of strange grooves on the inside of the earring, however. Uh, insert your finger on it into the notch that matches where the triangle was pointing in the fanged circle you saw on Zombie 79's forehead. 250 experience. You hook your fingernails into the third groove from the top and press it inwards. As you do, there is a click and the top of the earring snaps open. Not only can you wear the earring now, it also looks like there is a secret compartment inside the earring. Shake the earring, see if anything comes out. You shake the earring, but nothing comes out. Whatever was hidden in the earring is gone now. Oh well. Discovering the latch to the earring will now allow you to wear it. In addition, the secret compartment may make the earring more valuable to a merchant. So, well, we still need to identify this one, but we could wear this one instead. It doesn't do anything though. Fine. This looks to be a corpse of a well-aged, even ancient woman. Aside from the embalming fluid stink, the stitches sealing her mouth and the number six, 679 stitched under her right cheek, it's likely she looks only slightly different now than she did in her final years. <coughs> so, doing anything later? The corpse continues to stare at you. And we have a skeleton worker. Uh, we examine the skeleton carefully. Okay. How about this skeleton, Morty? Will it do as a buddy? Oh, he says the same thing. Okay. He doesn't like it. Uh, let's try and pry out the skeleton's joint bolts. Using your pry by you rip the bolts from the skeleton's joints. The skeleton collapses, some of its bones still twitching. Alright. Uh, we get another wooden club that we don't really need. Fine. Let's continue. You there, hold. No, hold yourself. Um, oh, I need a key. He's gonna talk to us. Um, no, I had some questions. I'm here to see someone. I'm here to see doll. Leave me in peace. Thank you. You're stupid. Done. Oh, isn't that a mortuary sanctum key? Would it open this one? Yes. I'm gone. Apparently there's a set of stairs going All down. Right. 
This is empty. There is a hammer. If I had a hammer, I would hammer in the morning. If we went down here, we would come out here. We climbed up here. Okay. Let's go up again. So, well, inventory is getting crowded. The iron spike, 1 to 3 piercing damage. A hammer, 1 to 6 crushing damage. Leather strap. Nobody really needs that. Dustman request. Did I read that? A note written on a scrap of dry parchment. Contract the necromancer responsible for raising contractual worker 42. I know he's ex he examined the skeleton before, but I'm certain the initial raising of the body was warped. The worker still responds to commands, but when it has completed the task, it resumes pacing in the same circular pattern as it did before. Dahl recently informed me that worker 42 exhibited the same walking pattern when it was a zombie decades ago. There may be a soul echo in the marrow of the skeleton's age, or in the marrow, or the skeleton's age may have caused the magic animating him to decay. One of the initiates suggested it may be following an order issued by a higher ranking dustman in the past, but I have found no records of such order. Uh, whatever the reason for its behavior, the matter is to be restored or the, work, the worker replaced. Yeah, well, I've, I'm afraid it was <laughs> my fault. I'm just uh, dropping some items on Morty. He can't use them since he doesn't have any hands. But hey, whatever. How much? How much can you carry? Seventeen, nine out of ninety. Oh, here you're actually stronger. Is that correct? It's to Twelve to ten. Okay. Uh, no, I wanted to go to the inventory. Okay, what is that here? Quiver, okay. Maybe you should save. Done. What happened? Oh, it doesn't matter, nobody likes you. The number 1146 is carved into the forehead of this walking corpse. Its lips are soon together with coarse black thread. The entire body is covered in horrible scars, worse even than your own as if its owner had been burned to death. Its nose, ears and several digits are missing, presumably charred away in some long ago conflagration. As you block its path to get its attention, it stops and gazes at you with vacant eyes. Um, yeah, we don't get anything here. Skeleton worker. Oh! This skeleton has either seen a great deal of combat or has fallen down one too many staircases. Both its arms and legs have been broken and rebuilt with the aid of leather straps and thin iron rods. The front of its skull bears the number 800, 863, <coughs> but the back of the skull has caved in, forming an empty cavity. You notice that someone has taken advantage of this intact, a rolled up piece of parchment inside the skull. We take the parchment out of the skeleton's skull. You slip the parchment out of the worker's skull. Oddly enough, it looks as if the skull cavity is intended to store messages. A tiny th string is attached to the parchment from a hook bolted inside the skull, as if to keep the parchment from accidentally falling out. Unhook the string, take the parchment. You unhook the string and glance over the parchment. It looks like a reminder from one of the mortuary's custo cust custodians. Judging from the note, this skeleton seems to be a walking messenger of sorts. As you take a second glance at the skeleton, you realize it has stopped in front of the slab because it can't figure out how to move past it. Uh, examine the skeleton again. Um, examine the skeleton carefully. Okay, nothing new. Leave the skeleton in peace. What did we get? Mortuary reminder message. This rolled up piece of parchment appears to be some sort of message the skeleton in the mortuary was supposed to deliver. This is the third and last request for the prior, but if it has been misplaced, tell me and I shall go to the hive market and purchase another. I have no objection to maintaining the contracted workers, but I've been trying to repair the skeletons and the bolts are wedged in so tight I can't get them out. Also, some of the locks on the storage cabinets on the third floor have 
become stuck again due to the heat and I need the pry bar to snap them open as well. If the pry bar is indeed lost I will see about procuring the service of a locksmith and having the cabinet locks replaced. Your aid in this matter would be appreciated. An unreadable signature has been scrawled beneath the message. Message. Well, I'm gone. Looks like I am in possession of the pry bar now. What you gonna do about it? I'm gone. Did we talk to you? Yeah, we probably did. No, the numbers. 613 are cut deeply into its his plodding corpse's forehead, but an inch of shredded leathery skin separates the one and the three. Looking closely, you can barely make out a two carved here. Okay. All right. Apparently, there's nothing going on with the skeleton. Done. Done. So let's check out the crematorium. Did we talk to you? <sighs> well, this corpse is a slightly mishappen head. It appears to be held together by a number of narrow metal bands bolted directly into the skull. A rusting iron plate over its left eye has the number 475 etched into it. Its mouth is bolted shut and it reeks of embalming fluid. Looks like there's nothing we can actually do with it. We're still true neutral, okay. Ah, oh, you again. No, I'm not lost. I'm looking for the all. Thanks. So, well. Could we do something with I'm gone. the skeleton workers? Uh, examine it carefully. Let's leave it in peace. No. Done. Done. Okay. All right. I'm gone. More bandages. All right. This container's locked. Forced it. Open. All right. Not anymore. What do we have here? A corpse fly charm, a bone charm, and uh, some money. Done. A clot charm. All right. Empty. Mortuary task list and a dustman embalming charm. And adventure is almost full. So, well, what do we have? A corpse fly charm. This corpse fly charm looks like it was frozen. It appears to be dead, but you can't be sure. The magic contained within the charm is activated when the insect is consumed. When swallowed, the recipient suddenly becomes extremely nauseous. A few seconds later, the charmed individual expels a stream of insects from their nose and mouth. Provided the charmed individual can keep their wits about them after the casting, the caster can send this cloud to attack a target. That's not too bad. And here we have the bone charm. This old finger bone charm has been hollowed out and tiny symbols have been scratched on its surface. A user must snap it in two to activate it. When snapped, the bone charm temporarily strengthens the user's skeleton and acts as a ward against breaks and fractures. The charm gives the user an overall bonus to the armor class and additional resistance against crushing attacks. I think this is what we need to actually uh, activate the, the thingy, uh, the portal. Dustman embalming a lesser charm. This strange metal bracelet has directions inscribed on the side of it. Judging from the crew text, it appears that the bracelet works by being, works by being held by a living creature. Then while pronouncing a mantra to the true death, it is touched to the forehead of a zombie or skeleton. When this is done, the minor enchantment held within the item spreads through the corpse, strengthening their bones, killing traces of corpse rot, and or grave mold, and helping to seal minor tears in the skin. This item will work on either you or Morty. Simply place it in your quick item slot and use it from the quick menu on Morty, or have Morty use it on you in order to take 
for it to take effect. When cast, the target gains 2 to 8 temporary hit points and a temporary bonus of plus 1 AC for half an hour. The extra hit points will heal the target if he is less than max hit points, as they will give him bonus hit points for half an hour. And will you die if you just have like one or two hit points left and half the half the hour, the 30 minutes are actually over? Will the additional hit points get deducted again? <coughs> oh well, bless me. So we give that to Morty then. And Mortuary Task List. Someone has penned a series of tasks in red ink on this scrap of parchment. I would like a con the contracted workers to be inspected thrice daily at the end of each work shift when the new initiates come on duty. We have experienced too many contracted collapses while engaged in heavy labor as of late and I fear the embalming enchantments initially used on the corpse may be decaying or may have been warped somehow. If the contracted workers could be inspected every 8 hours and raised if they have collapsed, then this would prevent the backlog of shells in the preparation room and free up more contracted workers for other duties. I do not wish collapsed bodies to be disposed of. When possible, the original contracted shell was ought to be raised and to be made to resume their duties. I have included spare embalming charms within the shelves for the initiates on duty. They are to be used only when the, sp when the spells cannot be repaired with stitching, bandaging or applications of embalming fluid. Okay. So I guess that's all there is to do in here. We pretty much got everything southern storage room, so we should probably move all down. Right. We explore the third floor. Still can't level up yet. What about you? Oh damn, you even need more experience. Yeah, I gu I'm guessing that because of his high wisdom, he actually, the nameless one, gets m a bigger share of the XP. Or bonus XP or something like that. Uh, wasn't there a door somewhere here? Can I open that now? Yes, I can. I'm gone. Hey, what Done. happened here? Cleaning rags and bandages. I have lots of bandages. Let's talk Done. to you. The especially ghastly looking female corpse is missing its ears, nose and lips. In order to sue her jaw closed, whoever prepared her had to draw the skin especially tight around her mouth. You can still see a line of crooked yellowed teeth through the opening slit that remains. The number 891 has been carved into the flesh of her bro. So, doing anything later? The corpse continues to stare at you. Blood stains, rust and other remains cover the surface of this metal slab. It is much larger than most of the other slabs and is sitting on a platform that allows it to be rotated. I'm gone. Yeah, okay, so there is nothing to be done here, apparently. I'm gone. There's only one skeleton running around, and one zombie running around, and it doesn't do anything. That probably means we should go... Down? Yeah. Uh, we could also go down here if I'm... No, w wait. Um... Let's save. Go down here. Where are we? First floor, okay. Um, you see a stern looking man in black robes. He is glaring at you suspiciously. You state your business. Um, we could try to snap his neck, but it wouldn't work. Because our dexterity isn't high enough. We could try though. Lean in as if to whisper something to him, then snap his neck. You're not fast enough, and the dustman dodges as you lunge. When taking a step back, he claps his hands together sharply three times. In response, a great iron bell starts tolling throughout the mortuary. I hope you have meet, m made peace with your gods, dustman.
Okay, he's dead. Oh, this is a bad idea. Did we have um, an autosave? We probably have one. I have no, no no trouble with killing him, but making all the other ones hostile is not a good idea. Ah, I seem to be lost. Um, you do indeed look lost. The dustman's eyes narrow to slits and his hands falls to the dagger by his side. Wait here while I summon the other guards to direct you out. We wait. Ah, oh, that doesn't work. He's attacking too. He's attacking us. That's weird. I'm gone. I'm gone. Hmm. Okay, let's be harsh. My business is my own. You would do my you, you would do well to mind your own business, Dustman. Um call your friends, Dust they look forward to meeting them. Ah, it still doesn't work. Nothing. I was lost, but I'm heading for the exit now. Run for it. That doesn't work. Okay, let's try something completely different then. Um, let's go up. All right. And try and find right. another dustman. All right. You. You seem to be a dustman. We kill you. You're dead. Oh, no, they are hostile too. Ah shit, I don't want to make them all hostile. Hmm. Let's try the other entrance then. All right. So, first floor, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gone. Maybe we have to evade him? We shall see, but we will probably deal with that problem in the next video. So, well, thank you very much for watching. And see you soon. Bye.